Hey, this is Rene. Welcome back for another video on this channel. And today I want to talk about this moving average uh, day breakout program again that I wrote in the last video. If you haven't watched it, you should. And I made another back test um, before I started this video for the last um, around about 10 years. And here you can see the graph. So in the last video, I said I wanted to maybe adjust this program a bit so we can make this better. So let's have a look at the current state of this program. And these are the trades from this test. Um, so far, the program searches for the uh, moving average on the daily chart. And yeah, we cannot really see it here. Maybe I can apply it quickly. And then um, this daily moving average will give the overall trend direction. So let me add the moving average quickly. So here we should only see long trades because we are above the moving average. And then trades are taken when the price in the current candle jumps above the high of the previous candle. And in clear trend periods like here, for example, or here, this can work out quite fine, but we see so many, so many trades. So I think a big issue is just the trading cost and, of course, sideways periods um, will yeah, make the program not really generate profits. So what can we do to change this? So the idea is, or my idea was, to still stick with this moving average as the overall trend um, direction indicator. But since, like, for example, let's have a look at uh, some of these uh, candles here. Like, for example, here in this candle, we see that, yes, we do make a profit here, but um, this candle or this profit could have been a lot bigger if we would have entered the trade earlier. So maybe with the opening of this candle or even better somewhere up here. So my idea was to not trade the day breakout, but instead on every single day, wait for the market uh, to come back a bit. So um, yeah, let me show it to you like again on this candle, like this is a down uh, trend. And here when this um, candle opens pretty much. We want to check if the price comes back a bit and then goes into the down direction. So we are waiting for retracements pretty much before we enter the trade. This means that um, we still trade the moving average pretty much, but the entries just get a lot better. And the question is, is the overall profit now higher because we get the better entries or will this make us miss out on so many trades so the profit will get worse? So let's have a look at the programming part. So if you do not have the code from the last video, again, watch it. Otherwise, you will not really be able to follow along. But I will just tell you what I changed here in this video now. So, um, so far we had it like this pretty much. So here in this if statement, we checked if, um, yeah, first of all, the, the close price of the last bar is above the moving average price for the last bar. And then we checked if the close of the current bar is above the high of the last bar or if the close of the current bar is below the low of the last bar. This is pretty much what um, brings us this result that I just explained here because we trade the breakouts from the previous daily bar. So now I made some changes. I deleted these lines here. So we do not trade the breakout anymore. And instead I added this line. So let me do this real quick and then I will explain it. So now instead of checking if the current price is above or below the previous day high or low, we now check if the current price, which is stored in this close zero variable here, if it is smaller than the open of the current day minus a specific percentage. <clears throat> And we can also say here like um, uh, retracement percent, we can make this a input instead of hard coding it. So, um, and divide this by 100, so we get the percentage. So what we do here is we still check if the close price of the last bar is above the moving average price of the last bar. And then we check, this is for the buy, scenario, we check if the close of the current bar, so 
which is essentially the, just the current price. If it is smaller than the open of the current daily bar minus a retracement percentage multiplied with the open price of the current price divided by 100, which means that we want a percentage of the current daily bar open price. Um, so we want the bar to, uh, to or the price to drop a specific percentage below the current open price of the current daily bar. And this will make a lot more sense when we have a look at this in the strategy tester. But now let me let me tell you what I else changed in this program. I think this open zero variable was not there before in the last tutorial. So, I mean, this is pretty easy. Just create it here. It's completely the same as close zero or close one or high one. These are all the values that we get using the I high, I close, I low, I open functions and they always just give us the price for a specific bar which is defined by the symbol, the time frame and the shift. And here we get the open price for the current bar which is shift value zero of course. Also let's now create this um, retracement percent tracement percent input so we can say for example 0.5 percent. So if we compile this and if we do not get any error, we can go back to our program here and now make a test in the visual mode. So I activate the visual mode. I will just test for the last year so it doesn't take forever to load. And then let's maybe take um, the 15 minute chart. And here we go. So let's wait until this is loaded. Also, please let me know in the comments if you like these like fast paced programming tutorials where I do not explain all the basics, but um, just explain like important changes so we can go quicker with the actual system development. Um, yeah, let me know what you think about it in the comments. And also if you need all the programming basics, you can still check out the links in the video description for my complete course where I explain everything in detail. So what are we looking for here? We are currently above the daily 100 period moving average. So we are looking for buy positions or orders. In this case, we had the buy breakout already, so the old system would have opened a trade, but this system does not. And uh, here we are waiting for the retracements. So let's wait for the first position maybe. And then we have a look why this position was opened. And I think here we now see it. Uh, yeah, this is taking a while to load the bar. So this usually means that it opened a position and there is the position. So let's have a look at this. Um, yeah, let me pause this test real quick. And now uh, I make this a little bit bigger so we can see here. So this is where the test started and now the third bar here from the top, or sorry, not from the top, but from the opening of this bar, it went down 0.5%. Yeah, I mean, I could do the math here, but not 900 something points is around, or it's probably exactly 0.5% of the current price here, which is 1,800 for gold right now. So you can see after this 0.5% retracement, we now open the buy position. And the benefit is that this theoretically should give us a way better entry. And we are still following this overall trend direction, which is determined by the moving average. So the, the whole thing or the whole idea here is to follow the moving average or the overall trend period uh, or direction, but just get a way better entry because we do not enter directly with the beginning of the candle or, or with, the, with the breakout of the previous daily candle, but just when the price retraces a bit so we get a better entry. And yeah, you can see sometimes this is working out quite fine, like for these three, four bars here, five bars, it was doing very good. Um, but of course, sometimes you just miss out a trade or sometimes like here, you also have negative trades. So here you could play around a little bit with the, with the settings and check out if like you need more than the 0.5% than the, the or maybe for these strong down moves here, we also want to add a trailing stop. Uh, not, not a trading stop, but a stop loss. So this is something I also want to do here in this tutorial now. So we can say input double stop loss percent. And here we can just take a percentage maybe again 
of the current price or the open price of the current bar. Um, so yeah, this will maybe make the strategy safer. I mean, I did not test this in the long, long run. I will do some optimizations maybe later. So we can see if this is actually good or bad. And then we will see um, yeah, where we go with this strategy. Okay, so since now we have this um, stop loss input, we now have to calculate the stop loss. Or maybe let's also get the entry. The entry will be the symbol... Uh, ask price of course here and then we can calculate the stop loss which will be the entry minus the stop loss or minus entry multiplied with SL percent divided by 100 just to get the percentage and now for a buy order we can say we want to open for the current symbol at the entry price and now we also provide the stop loss like this and of course we also want to do the same thing the same procedure here for the sell positions, there are some minor differences. Of course, sell positions are opened at the bid price, not the ask price, because we can always sell. Uh, we can only sell at the bid price. And for the stop loss, we will have to add the um, as a percent on the entry price. But the rest is kind of the same. We still want to open in the chart symbol with the entry and the stop loss. So if we compile this and do maybe just the same backtest again, just to spot the difference real quick, we will see that now we do have this stop loss for every single position. So yeah, here's the test with the changes that I just made, which is essentially just adding the stop loss. And let's see how this goes. Once it's loaded, um, yeah, there we go. It always takes a little bit longer when the first trade is executed. I don't really know what's going on in the background here in the tester, but it's kind of normal like this. So now it's loaded and you can see now the trades are actually the same, but we do have this stop loss. And yeah, here it was already saving some losses, I think. And um, yeah, we can still make profits if the price does not retrace too much. So this is um, like using a stop loss like this is always, um, there's always the question like, is the stop loss taking away profits because the price is just uh, stopping out the trade and then going to the right direction or is it actually saving losses in big candles like um, like the, the two candles here where we really save a lot of the losses using this stop loss. So yeah. To figure this out, the easiest way is to just do another test on high quality data. So this is what I want to do, of course, not only for a few days, but I want to do a long term back test now for multiple years. So let's maybe take the same testing period that I had before for the old system. And let's now test this with the new system here. You can see I'm testing in gold. Um, and I still use the settings kind of retracement percent 0.5, SL percent 0.5. And let's just give it a go and see how this turns out in the strategy tester over the last like 10 years. Yo, so here we are. Uh, Backtest is finished and it's looking actually very, very good. I wasn't really expecting this with uh, just these small and s really minor changes. But yeah, that, that's how it is. That's what system development is. You, you try stuff, you test it, sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, this, this time I feel like this is really, this could be something. I mean, and this is still not really optimized. Like, besides the two tutorials that I recorded, I was not really working on this program a lot, maybe like half an hour. So yeah, um, quite surprised how, how, how good this turned out. Um, of course, we have to be, as always, <laughs> I have to say this, with backtest, we have to be a little bit careful. Like, for example, directly in the beginning, there was one monster, monstrous big profit and then we had like two or three of these very very good trades so um yeah there you always have to be a little bit careful with because if you miss out one or two of these trades it may really have a strong impact on your performance so this is why you should always be a little bit careful also with gold and trading with stop losses in this case the stop loss that 
secures the trade. You always have to keep in, in your mind that stop losses never guarantee the execution at the price that you want to have the execution. So stop loss levels are not guaranteed. Um, because if the price touches the stop order, it will become a market order. And I mean, you know the deal. You can still lose a lot more than um, than you would in the strategy tester because the strategy tester usually executes the trades a little bit better than you would see it in the live account. So I, I would definitely leave some room for this here in this testing resite. But overall, I'm, I'm, I'm super satisfied with this resite. Let's have a look at the back test. Uh, key figures here. Uh, we we do see, yeah, like 1.4k trades over these years. So roughly, um, like a little bit over 100 trades per year, which is fine. I would say it's a, it's a good and healthy amount. Then we do see a profit factor that is above one, which is great. So it means the strategy is profitable in the tester. And yeah, this is 100% data. Also, we see a profit and the drawdowns are exceptionally low, um, which is also great. But um, yeah, I mean, you could still start to optimize this strategy. This is something I did not do so far. And this is something that I would like to give in your hands. So let me know what you think in the comments. And maybe if you did some optimization runs, um, yeah, post your settings that you found out to be good. And maybe you also tested this in other symbols. Let's just share our results so everyone can benefit from this. And yeah. If you did not code the program yet, make sure to watch the previous video and also this video so you know how it works. But here I showed the whole code again. And I mean, yeah, you can just pause the video if you want to copy this. And also if you want to learn how to write your own programs and not just copy it from some online gurus like myself, you should definitely check out the links in the video description because I have a complete course on MetaTrader 5 programming, which is great um like actually it's my best product by far you learn how to code you can write your own programs you can code for others just makes your trading life so much better this is it for this tutorial hope you liked it let me know what you think i'm out see you next time bye